Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today I'm going to walk you through the process to replace the upper and lower ball joints on our 2012 Honda TRX 420, also known as the Honda Rancher. Now there's a couple of different part numbers that you need to take into account depending on if you're just doing the upper or just the lower. I'm actually going to do both, so let's step over to the table and let me show you what I'm talking about. Now on a lot of machines, they typically have the upper and lower ball joints that are going to be the same. On this particular unit, however, they're a little bit different. Now if you look closely, one's a little bit bigger diameter and just a little bit thicker on that shoulder right there. Now in most cases, it's usually the bottom one that wears out first. I'm not sure why that's the case, but it, it is. Now also, when you're trying to find these on the exploded parts diagrams, the lower one is shown in the steering knuckle and the upper one is on the control arm. So that's the two areas you're going to have to go to to get the two different part numbers, depending on which one or both that you're going to be replacing. Well, now that we've got our parts in line, let's lift the machine up and knock this project out. All right, let's start by getting the front tire off. Now the jack I'm using, it has a really large base and it lends itself to holding up four wheelers. Now, if you're trying to do this with a regular floor jack, I can't really recommend that because you've only got one little three or four inch pad and it's probably gonna fall on you and we don't need that. So if you are using just a regular floor jack, I would suggest you get a couple of jack stands to get up under the frame to hold it steady because we will be pushing and pulling on it pretty hard. Now what you're looking for here on the ball joint is an excessive amount of play where you can actually see it and feel it rocking at this joint. And one of the big indicators is if you've got a cut in this boot, which it does, that allows dirt and water to get up in there and that starts wearing out the joint. And it's almost like this joint's got arthritis. And that's what's causing it to pivot back and forth up there. So let's start by getting the cotter pin out of there. She's trying to be tough. Game over now. Now let's go ahead and buzz that castle nut off. If you get somebody to hold the front brakes, that should be enough to hold it. Yep. Next, let's get the shield off. Just a couple of 10 millimeters. Now you'll notice a little bit of resistance on these because they actually have blue Loctite on them. Next, let's get that caliper. That's just a couple of 12 millimeters. And just so we've got some room to work, we're gonna remove this upper clamp, holding the hose at the, toward the end of the control arm. And that should give us enough wiggle room now we're going to take it in a zip tie and just for the time being attach it to the, the shock spring so it'll be held up out of our way. There we go. Now let's see if it will release the hub. Yeah, no problem. Piece of cake. Next, we're going to swing it around so we can get out that cotter pin and then the, the nut for our tie rod end. Uh, the cool thing about Honda, they actually give you a couple of slots where you can hold it still because, of course, it's spinning. What I like to do, especially on these, is go ahead and put the, the nut back on there. That'll lessen the chance of us damaging the threads. Okay, now we're down to a couple more cotter pins and then get those castle nuts off. And then our actual steering knuckle should come out of the way. All right. And the castle nut down low is a 17 millimeter. What we're gonna do is take the castle nut off, and reverse it, thread it back on. Let's get the splash guard out of the way. That's where I got some room to work. How much you have are three five millimeter Allen. Now, let's see if we can get this ball joint puller up in there far enough to pop this loose. <clears throat> a 
That is a tremendous amount of pressure. It really should have let go. Uh, let's see if we can add a little shock to the system. There we go. So yes, you will need one of these. Otherwise, I guess you could go the caveman route, put it up on its back end, get out a really big hammer and beat the crap out of it. But this is the correct way to do it. Of course, now it's wanting to spin. Easy. <laughs> All I'm doing now is just pushing back down with the pry bar just to re-release it. I mean, it's already popped loose, but it was holding on just a little bit. Now, let's go for that second one. Not a lot of working room here. There we go. Tell you what, let's we'll see if we can hold that knuckle still ish with this. Now, this is just like the bottom. We just need to get the cotter pin out of here. There's not a lot of room to work with. And once you get it, just use the regular wrench, 17 millimeter, and break it loose. There shouldn't be a lot of torque on it. Reverse our castle nut. We're just creating a little cup here to hold it, hold that tool on the end. If we can get our puller back up in here to break it loose. Satisfying sound. Not quite as tough as the bottom one, fortunately. Now, let's see if we can get her to pop out of there. All right, guys, before we take off the, the shock and this other mount so we can get our control arm off, let's go ahead and get this upper circlip off. It's just easier to deal with when it's on the machine. This is holding it still for you. Looks like we've got one more tin for that other hose clamp. Then looks like a bunch of 14s. So 14s for the shock and for the upper pivot point bolts. One, two, and the shock. All right, she's off. Let's head over to the press and get this pushed out. Yeah, that boot had had it. So that's where all that play was. So well, let's get it pushed out. All right, guys, here is where it gets a little fun. Now, of course, Honda makes a special tool that actually is utilized in extracting and then reinstalling the, the new uh, ball joints. Do I have one? Of course. Will I sell you one? Yes, I can. But are you going to go buy a tool that you're only going to use one time? Well, I'm going to show you a workaround. Um, the pieces I'm going to use are just different odds and ends that you can pick up at a local hardware store. And we're going to use a combination of these to get this pushed out and then get the new ones pushed in. So let's start with the control arm one first. Now the caveman way would be just to set your vise up like this and just hammer it out. We're actually going to try using a press instead. And what we're looking for is a cup that will just barely go to the outside of this edge, something like that. That way we've got a, a space that we can press it through into. That's what we're after. So it's going to press it straight through into there. I think I paid a, a dollar for this. And all it is is just a one and a quarter inch PVC type conduit for an electrical run. <laughs> I imagine the people that designed this didn't have this in mind, but that's what we're gonna do with it. A little bit of a balancing mat here. 
I'm using a 32 millimeter adapter from a Motion Pro driver kit, and that should give it enough clearance to go on in. What I'm having to do is just line it up to where it'll go in that void. That's it. A lot more civilized than using a big hammer, huh? <laughs> now this is gonna be a little bit trickier because the only edge we have to work with is right inside here. So, another adapter. Once again, take your, your joints to uh, your local hardware store and just find a cup that will fit down over it. Now a combination of this PVC cup and a 47 millimeter driver, and that's gonna push it straight in. Now we're gonna use that other cup on the back side. I know this is a lot to hold together, but we'll get it there. You just have to be a little creative. <laughs> or you can buy the tool, it's up to you. There it is. Now can you do that with a hammer and a vise? Yes, but doing it this way, I know I'm not gonna damage it. Put in the retaining clip. One down, one to go. Now this one's gonna be a little bit trickier because there's no way to really support this in the press. So we're gonna be using a vise to do this one. Let's start by getting that retaining ring out. But first, let's get the mud out of it so I can actually get the tool to engage. All right, we're using the same inch and a quarter PVC as the cup for it to go into. And then we're gonna use a 22 millimeter socket on this side to push it through. This is where if you have a, a third arm, it will come in handy. Bingo. All right, now to get this one in, using more plumbing supplies, this is an inch and a quarter threaded pipe. And that is what we're after. So we don't want to drive on the rubber. We just want it to go straight to the metal. And that's what we have. Now I will end up having to put a cup on the other side once it bottoms out, because remember, it's going to go about an eighth of an inch past the other side. That probably bottomed out. So now, just gotta get that last eighth of an inch to finish it off. Actually, I have a second inch and a quarter threaded piece that we're gonna use. That's it. Hardware stores, you gotta love them combination of these four pieces got them pushed out and pushed back in and we did all that without using a hammer one last thing to take care of is to get the retaining clip back in make sure it seats all the way in now the battle's over for the most part let's go put it back together let's go ahead and get a little bit of grease on the end of the splines you don't have to put a lot because there's actually a gear lube inside of the case. Now you'll notice that the, the boots look a little bit different. That's because in a separate video, I went through the process to replace both the inner and the outer. And if you need help doing that, why don't you reference this unit's playlist and I can walk you through it. Now the orientation on our upper pivot bolts, they both face in. There we go. And then the shock and it actually faces forward. Now I'm just gonna bottom them out and then we will torque them to 32 foot pounds. Okay, so both of the upper pivot bolts get torqued to 32 and then we're gonna put 22 on the shock side. All right, we'll go ahead and get the support bracket in place. And that's just a 10 millimeter. Let's go ahead and get our knuckle in position. And actually, this is a little bit tricky because we're right on top of our CV boot. So we more or less have to bring the castle nut in 
and then bring it up like that. All right, now to hold everything together, we're going to go ahead and put on our steering rod. And if that joint needs to be replaced on yours, we have a video for that as well. Get our 17 back on. But now let's go ahead and put on our lower castle nut. And that's 17 millimeter, of course. Now we need to torque both the lower and the upper to 21 foot pounds. That'll do. Now here's the real trick. My torque wrench is not going to fit in there. So how do we torque the other one? Well, let me show you this little gadget. This attaches to just a regular box end wrench. Then it has a 3 8 receptacle there. And as long as you have this thing at 90 degrees like this, you can go ahead and torque it. Reach in there. Yeah. Now. There you go. Cool little device. Now remember, we need to get in our cotter pins, and if they don't quite line up, I have to put a little bit more on it. That should hold it. Let's get our one on the bottom next. Okay, one more cotter pin. It's actually a retention pin on the steering. Now don't forget to get your splash guard back on. And if you didn't remember, just five millimeter Allen. Now, time to get our hub back on, but let's add a little bit more grease down into the splines as well as on the outer surface. Careful not to get any on the actual brake disc because that would have a, a negative effect. Okay. going to put this on just hand tight for the time being then we'll come back and torque it. So there's a couple of different ways we can do this. I can use a pry bar trick in here to hold the hub still and I think that's the way I want to go but don't put it against the threads. We want to go ahead and put two of the nuts on and actually put them on in reverse that way it's got this edge to hold it in. The other way is to put the brake caliper back on, have somebody hold the brakes, and then try to torque it. But that isn't always enough to hold it still. This will definitely hold it still. We're going to take this one to 58 foot-pounds. That'll do. cotter pin back in. See if we've got it lined up. Next, let's cut our zip tie loose and get our caliper back on. And if your brake pads are worn out, we have a video showing you how to replace those as well. And we're taking those to 22 foot-pounds. Get this upper mount in there, or clamp. 
Next, let's get this little guard back in place. When it was put together, it had a little bit of blue Loctite on the end of these. So we're just going to add some back on there. All right, guys, we're almost done. Only thing we have left is just the front tire. We're going to torque those to 47 foot-pounds. Let's get them to seat first. All right, now, 47, coming up. Well, all right, guys, that's going to wrap up this project. I know it was a lot of work, but just think how much that would have cost if you went to the dealership and had it done. And you did it yourself and saved a whole bunch of money in the process. Well, listen, if you need any other parts for your machine, why don't you come see us at Partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And hey, if you like what you see, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can keep up with whatever I'm working on next. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Parkzilla, and we will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.